Thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name's Amanda, I live in South Australia and I'm the owner and artist of Miyasa Creative. I love to create things that are beautiful to me and that's what my channel is all about, creating some beauty in our world. From furniture upcycles to plants or both, resin art and DIYs, whatever I make it will always be creative and beautiful. You'll also see my fur babies popping in to say hello. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so, so much. Your support means the world to me and I'm so happy to have you back. And if you are new to my channel, I'm really happy to have you here and I hope that you will consider subscribing and becoming a part of this creative and inclusive community here on YouTube. It's free for you and it means so, so much to me. This is my next furniture piece that I'm currently working on. Uh, it is a solid wood hutch. I believe it's teak. Um, and so I'm going to be keeping it mostly wood, but I am going to be stripping off the finish, which is, as you can imagine, taking quite a while. Uh, so I decided I would do a shorter video this, this time, and I'm just going to be showing you my plant cabinets. So this is my first one I'm going to show you. I built this over a year ago um, and I'm just going to talk you through a bit of the process of how I did it. Unfortunately, I didn't video it, but I'm just going to show you photos and talk you through the process and the setup of it. So I built this back in October last year when I decommissioned my old one because my plants were getting too big. Uh, so I, they needed something a bit bigger. So I started on this one and um, I took the doors and the glass off and then I painted inside and out multiple coats of paint. I did a uh, distressed look on uh, the paint job. Then I sealed the inside really well with a clear pond sealer. Uh, multiple multiple coats I don't even know how many coats I used but a lot I put a lot on there just to make sure that it was completely sealed so that no moisture would get through to the wood uh, so this is it being set up uh, once I'd finished building it I brought it inside and started planting it um, so where do I start I'll just kind of talk you through quickly I did um a white plastic sheet on for the backing and I covered that with expanding foam then with sphagnum moss uh, and then I used heavy duty velcro to stick that onto the back of the cabinet um, I cut a hole in the top for the light and a smaller hole for the humidifier uh, and it also has a small fan running uh, so here I'm showing in January when I planted my queen. Uh, so as you can see, everything was growing really well up until that point and I got my queen. I believe, well, she was sold to me as a queen anthurium, but um, I'm not sure. I think maybe she's a hybrid or maybe she's something completely different. I don't know, but I love it a bit and she's just gorgeous and I'm going to refer to her as my queen. So here's a bit of the progress of as she established herself in the cabinet. Uh, so her second leaf was at least three times bigger than the first one she had when I planted her. Uh, she just kept going bigger and bigger with each leaf and um, oh, she was just such a joy to grow in my cabinet. Uh, she's definitely up there with, uh, well, she is my favourite plant, I think, Um and she just, yeah, this la the last leaf that I'm showing here, uh, she just it just kept expanding bigger and bigger and bigger until the top of the leaf literally was touching the top of the cabinet. Um, so you know, from January to April, this is how much bigger she was that this leaf just kept getting bigger and bigger and more beautiful and more beautiful and uh yeah so I've just included quite a few photos here of her because she's my pride and joy um 
And as you can see, she's just amazing. And this is my uh, Crystal Cross Magnificent Hybrid Anthurium. Uh, this plant is just a beast. Every leaf just gets bigger and bigger and more beautiful and more beautiful. And um, yeah, it's, it's just such an amazing plant. It looks so great in my cabinet. And, um, you know, I'm showing you a little bit of a progress here like I did with the queen. I'm just going to do that with my favourite plants that in the cabinet just so that you can see the progress over the months there. and my Monstera Albo. Now, this plant, this was its first leaf, pure white. Uh, I was really concerned, uh, but the second leaf that she put out had some green and it's just gone from strength to strength since then. Um, she's just so gorgeous. A lot of white. I think I would probably have problems if I didn't have her in a high humidity cabinet because of how much white she's got, um, but because she's in the cabinet, she's pristine, absolutely stunning, which you'll see um, in a little while when I show you her new home. And this is just a quick overview of the whole cabinet and how she was looking in June this year. Um, so I've, I've only really detailed and highlighted my favorite plants that are in the cabinet, but there are a lot of other plants in here as well. I have, um, a lot of Marcans growing up the back wall. Um, I also have a Philodendron Majestic in here and Vericosum, uh, Gloriosum and some Malacacia as well. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's what she looked like in June, 2000. 23 and then sadly in July my mum uh, passed from breast cancer um, she'd been fighting it for the last year and um, it was devastating devastating loss uh, fell into a deep depression and um, yeah so my plants did get a little bit neglected I didn't water um, I didn't realise that they had got thrips and uh, had a massive thrip outbreak. Normally I use beneficial bugs to control pests on my plants, but um, I hadn't done it this time. And uh, yeah, you can definitely see the neglect and the damage, unfortunately. Um, when I did start coming out of the depression, a bit. Um, I really just found that I needed to keep my mind busy doing things, concentrating on other things. Um, so I decided I was going to build a new cabinet. Um, one, because my queen definitely was not going to fit another one of her leaves in this cabinet. Um, and I just wanted to do something to keep my mind busy. So I got an Ikea greenhouse um, tool uh, the Millsbow greenhouse. So now I'm going to show you my Ikea Millsbow tool. And um, I took some photos of how I put it together. Uh, so I used the shelves um, that came with the cabinet to create like a, a bit of a 
planting box in the bottom of the cabinet. Uh, so I siliconed those in and I also siliconed all up around the sides um, or the corners where there was metal um, and I siliconed around the top at the back to enclose that section there so no water could get trapped and go stagnant. Um, lots and lots of silicone just to make sure that it was going to be fully watertight. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you can see here, that's the back piece of glass. So I made sure that there was no way that any water could get in down between the back panel of glass and where I had put the shelf. Um, and then I just laid it on its back, worked out where I wanted my pots and sprayed expanding foam all over it. As you can see in these photos. So for the Millsbow, I've built it specifically for my climbing plants. Um, so I wanted to make sure that there was lots of free space at the top where the plants had plenty of space to grow um, so that you know it's going to be a while before I will need to cut them um, so that was the goal for this cabinet I really just wanted to make sure they had enough space to be able to grow up the back of the cabinet um, so yes once I had done the spray foam I brought it inside and put it up where it was going to be and then I carved and um, removed uh, any of the foam off of the edges that I didn't want because I wanted to make sure that the sides would still be able to get lots of light and they weren't going to have any expanding foam on them. So you can see here I've just kind of pulled it all off around the edges just to make sure there was enough uh, free space there and that it wasn't on the glass. And uh, here I'm just showing I didn't take the expanded foam all the way down to the bottom because I'm going to be putting planting medium in the bottom of the cabinet. Um, so then I cut a hole in the top of the cabinet there so that any uh, cords and the humidifier could come through. And then it was time for the sphagnum moss. So I just used stainless steel wire and I just sort of bent it into like a big C shape here, like you can see. And I just took clumps of the sphagnum moss and uh, pinned them onto the expanding foam so that um, it was secured on there. And the sphagnum foam uh, the sphagnum moss usually it just kind of it hides the wire you can't even see it just as soon as it sort of fluffs up it just hides it so that is uh, a very time consuming process it takes a long time to pin it in it's basically each one of those pins has like a handful clump of sphagnum moss that it's holding on there so if you can imagine the size of the Millsbow and how much sphagnum moss um, I used to completely fill it up. So once I had all the sphagnum moss on the back I uh, put the growing medium in the bottom which is a mix of lecker, perlite and charcoal and it's got a bit of sphagnum moss in there as well and I also um, top it with a layer of sphagnum moss to help keep the moisture in. Uh, yeah, so that's a perfect growing medium for these plants. Very airy, but um, will still, you know, hold on to some moisture and they seem to love it. They thrive in it. Um, I then added the light to the top. So this is a 600 watt grow light by I think the company's called Moby uh, it is an adjustable grow light which I would recommend getting if you're going to get one get one that you can adjust um, and then as you can see there's also a little fan there so that's all set up and ready to go and 
then it's time for the planting. Yay. Okay, so I took um, a cutting of my queen, that last large leaf, and also my elbow and my majestic. And uh, I put them in the Millsbury cabinet, as you can see here. So, yeah, they, they uh, are also, what else did I put in there? Um, a cutting of my varicosum. There is um, my splendid there that you can see. The smaller one is a small clarinervium. Um, I also have other plants planted in the bottom as well. But um, so because I was taking them out of the established cabinet, the roots grow through the sphagnum moss um, really, really well. So it's really easy to take cuttings and transfer them because they've got roots that you can pull out of the sphagnum moss of the wall. So they literally were planted with pretty much full root systems, even though they were cuttings. So they didn't really go through too much shock. So here they are now, October 2023. Uh, as you can see, we have some new leaves. And I also have added some more plants in here. Um, so the little containers that you can see on the back there, that is from the beneficial mites. Um, I just tip them out of the big container that you get and put them on little ones and spread it all around everywhere. And it seems to have helped. We no longer have thrips. Yay. Although you will see a little bit of damage, unfortunately, which is a bit sad. But here they are. So some nice close ups of what we currently look like. So at the top there, you've got, I put in a Sodoroi and I had a new leaf come in for my little Clarinervium. And here is my beautiful elbow. That's her newest leaf that she's given me since she got in the cabinet. She's just so gorgeous. Um, the only damage that was caused um, during the move was there's a tiny little dot on the lowest leaf there, if you can see that, but just stunning. She's just stunning. So, so beautiful. And um, yeah, again, I don't think she would be that pretty if she wasn't in the cabinet. I don't think the white would do very well. Okay, so here's my um, Philodendron Majestic. This, that was the newest leaf. And there is, as you can see, some thrip damage on the older leaves there, unfortunately. Um, but she's settled in pretty well. She's given me a new leaf since she's been in there. And she's currently working on the next one. That down there is a Melanochrysum. And there's a Gloriosum there. And a little Anthurium in there, tucked in behind. I also have, that is a Glorious, Philodendron Glorious, just there. And there is a Baby Tire Constellation. That's a Syndapsis next to it. And the Varicosum. And another Philodendron, I'm not sure what that one is called. That's everything in the bottom of the cabinet. Doing well, settling in really well. And now we'll move up. So this is my newest baby, my Alocasia Friedek. Literally the last plant on my wish list and I finally got one. So beautiful. And there's the newest leaf on my little Clarinervium. And my soda rose settling in really well. It's given me a new leaf. My splendid has also settled in really well. So she's given me that new leaf there. And she's currently working on another one too. It's looking really beautiful. And my queen, 
That's her new leaf that she's given me since she's been in the cabinet. She's settled in beautifully. The oldest leaf has obviously taken a little bit of a hit. She's got some yellowing and I will probably be cutting that one off soon. I'll wait until I get the second new leaf first. But um, she's settled in really well. It won't take her long to get back to that large size that she was. And here I'm just showing you the humidifier, which is set to go off for a few minutes every hour. Um, I keep my cabinets above 80. And this is where my other plant cabinet is at now. So we've got uh, regrowth from the plants that I took cuttings from. And it's starting to bounce back. So it did take a hit and you can see some definite damage from on some of the plants in here. But it's it's coming back and it's starting to look really good again. Now that I'm looking after it better. Um, so I'm just giving you a little bit of an overview here. I also have some ferns. I've got some syndapsis, a bromeliad, um, peperomia turtles, mycans. That's all mycans. That's a syngonium back there, Wendlandia, I think it is. Um, yeah, so that, I mean, there's lots of other plants in this cabinet as well. So here's my big girl, my crystal mag cross hybrid. That's her newest leaf. She took a bit of a hit as well, but she's bouncing back too. And hello, white leaf on the new growth on my elbow again. So we will see how we go with that. But I do have a number of nodes I can cut down to if I need to on it. So I'm not too worried. If it if it all continues to come out white, I'll just chop. And this is my little varicosum. Surprisingly did not get touched by the thrips. And the newest leaf on that one. And newest leaf. That's just a, another anthurium that I've got in there. And my majestic, you can see where she's growing there. I also have some alocasia in the bottom. That's a silver dragon. A gloriosum. There is a melanochrysum and a micans growing up there together. That newest leaf there is a melanochrysum leaf. And my gloriosum. A black velvet alocasia. And I also have a few little anthurium babies in the bottom there. So you can see here my Majestic, that's where it's uh, grown after I took the cutting. And it's given me a new leaf. And you can see here she definitely wasn't happy about the thrips. And here is the new regrowth of my queen. So that's an older leaf there. And you can see this one here is a new leaf. And where I took the cutting, she's bouncing back pretty good as well. So I'm happy. And this is just a quick little shot of the humidifier in this cabinet. I also mist them with nutrient water once a week. So there you have it. There's um, my, both of my beautiful cabinets, which I love, they just bring me so much joy. Um, don't hesitate to ask me any questions if you have any. I'm more than happy to answer. Um, I do have other plants too, so I was thinking I might do 
a home tour of my all of my plants and some of my furniture projects as well so if you're interested in that let me know otherwise I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next one